Okay, welcome everyone to the WISE Worldwide Online Expo 2022 edition. Great to be here with you today. My name is Damian Kaspauer. I'm a software product manager here at Audio Kinetic, and we have got an exciting lineup for you today. Thanks to folks who are queuing in the chat. Great to see everyone today. And let's go. So you're here today to hear about WISE and uh, what we are doing here at Audio Kinetic uh, for the interactive audio industry. Uh, if you've been around, uh, this is our third year presenting this as an online event. First year was an epic eight hour adventure. Following year, we did two days of four hours each, and this year we're bringing you a succinct two hour adventure into what we're doing here at Audio Kinetic. Let's take a look at that schedule. The first hour, we're gonna go into some of the high level features that will be part of our next release, uh, WISE 22.1. Uh, the second hour, we're going to have a new product reveal uh, with our head of product, Simon Ashby. So stick around for that in the second hour. And just out of the gate, I wanted to let folks know, if you hadn't heard the news, WISE is now free for indies. So if you're working on a small to mid-sized project, Check out our licensing. Things have changed this year, and it's worth revisiting that to see if WISE might be the right fit for your project. And with that, we're going to start taking a look into some of the high-level features of our forthcoming release, WISE 22.1. And earlier this year, we began uh, talking about and showing some of these features as part of our public preview in the spring. Uh, we gave folks a chance to get their hands on it and try it out in the pipeline, and then followed up with that in the summer with our integrations beta. And again, an opportunity for people to try it out in their pipelines, give us feedback, and with that feedback, we've been growing the stability of the forthcoming release soon this fall. And so if you have put your hands on it and tried some of these new features out or you've been following along, thanks for that. And uh, we're really excited to talk about some of the things that you might have experienced or will experience with the new version of WISE. The first thing we're going to talk about is the new editing workflow. Uh, and I'm just going to hand it off to a video that uh, Bernard Rodriguez and I put together um, introducing you to to that. All right, Damien. All right, Bernard, this is the new editing workflow for WISE 22.1. We're super excited to bring this to you today. And we're just going to get started by jumping into the Woodlands ambient here in the WISE Adventure game. And you can see that we're using a new feature called the Project Explorer Search. We've just begun typing in this field, and our results are returned throughout the Project Explorer as indicated by these yellow numbered bubbles. And throughout the Project Explorer, then, we know where this term has been returned to us. We can also use the WISE authoring query language in that search. Yeah. So let's take a look at one of the objects here. and at First, what you'll notice is we present in the center of the screen an object tab. And this object tab is comprised of two editors. First, the primary editor on top that includes all of the properties, as well as the secondary editor that includes tabs for that specific object type. So what are we looking at, Bernard? Right there, we have a sound SFX object. And uh, on the secondary editor, we have the source editor that is no longer in a separate view. With Actually, it is still available in the source editor if we need, but it's also included right there in the tab. So it brings into focus exactly what we're looking at here and puts that editor right in front of you. What happens if we navigate up in the hierarchy to a random container? Mm -hmm. We have the contents editor showing with the, all the weight for our children objects. And let's go to the blend container, which 
show the blend track editor. Great, let's audition this and hear how our woodland ambience is sounding. So we have the night uh, parameter. Let's move to the day. So we have control over the game parameters right there in the blend track editor. So that's awesome. And part of this new tab-based workflow fits right in with the way that people are using tabs across other applications and becomes a familiar way to navigate within WISE. So why don't you show us some of the options that we have for object tabs? Yeah. So, so far we have been uh, navigating objects and you see the recycling icon here. Uh, as we navigate, the tab is being recycled. But if we want to keep the tab around for later use, we have options in the menu to keep open, or we can simply double click the tab to make the tab more permanent. Perfect. Let's keep that there for later and move on. The next thing we need to do is edit our lava sounds. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and type lava in that Project Explorer search, returns the results and puts into focus that ambient lava sound along with its source editor. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's go to the effect section to see what's in there. So we have a parametric EQ and a pitch shifter. And as you see, they're also shown as tabs in the secondary editor. So let's switch to it. So we have our EQ settings and pitch shifter settings right at the end here. Great, and you can also access those from the property editor as well. Exactly. You can see it shifts the focus of those tabs. And what else do we have down there? So we also have the attenuation editor uh, right there with all the settings that you know. The big thing here is just having everything associated with that object in the tab accessible within that secondary editor. And you can now begin to expand the way that you work with these different editors and whys. For instance, this attenuation editor do we want to pop that out and... Yeah, let's double click this lava first so we keep it here and let's pop out the attenuation editor. So we get this uh, floating window and why don't we put it inside our layout right over here. That seems like a good place for it. And the reason I could tell is that as you were dragging it around in the layout, I got a preview of where that was going to go. That seems like a great spot for it. Mm -hmm. Right. And this layout preview is new to WISE 22.1 and helps to inform your layout management by giving you a preview of what it's going to look like as you're modifying your layouts. Uh -huh. So I think it's music next. Let's yeah. jump in. Okay. Shall we search for enemies? Perfect. Okay. So we have our uh, music object. So let's, let's expand uh, all the results to see also the children object matching the query that we have. We have a music playlist. And as you see, we have the playlist right there. We don't need to go to the F10 layout anymore. I'm sorry, you're going to lose your F10 muscle memory because everything is presented to you when you focus on it in the Project Explorer. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the segment over here and we see our segment and um, maybe we need more space to edit our segment. So maybe we can click the maximize so we see a bit more of our segment. That's awesome. Another new piece of this is the zoom and focus that we've added in 22.1 that allow you to easily get around on your timelines using the segment editor. Mm -hmm. Let's go back here, restart our layout. Yeah. Great. And from this point, I think we need to do some event editing. Mm -hmm. So let's get that music enemies container into focus. Yeah. So let's see here. We have an event that is matching. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have our. So, and that puts it into the object tab group that we've been working in. But maybe we want to create and extend our workflow by creating a relationship between these different views in our layout. And we can do that with the newly named feature of selection channels. Mm -hmm. So you've 
created a second project explorer and we can see indicated by the number two there that it's associated with selection channel two. Yep. And what do we need to do to make sure that that stays in sync across a tab group? Yeah. So right now the two tab groups that we have are set to a star, uh, which means they're going to accept any selection channel. But what we can do is change it to number two. So now this group is bound to selection channel two. So as we change our events here, they're going to go on the second tab or also would work with the event viewer. If I click, however, objects in the actor mixer, they're going to actually go on the first group. Well, then that's a great way to extend your workflow because you can add that selection channel and know where the results of your selection are going to be populated. So great, we've got two object tab groups. We're working in different modes, but all of the objects in the Project Explorer have been reformatted in order to be presented as object tabs. So we need to get down to some mixing. Let's pop open our master mixing session. And as we can see, that's already presented there in our selection channel two object tab group. Yeah, the mixing desk right there in a tab. And uh, so let's again double click it to keep it there because we're going back to mixing later. And uh, let's uh, browse for uh, Soundcaster uh, sessions. So as you see, same thing here, we have our Soundcaster sessions open and uh, let's open the creature one so we can uh, try some uh, creature sounds. Great, and this really allows you to put things in a place that make it accessible for your workflow. So you always have what you need within the layout in order to accomplish whatever auditioning or profiling goals that you have in WISE. Well, that, that's great. <laughs> So we're excited for folks to get their hands on this new editing workflow as part of 22.1. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. So that was fantastic to get that overview of the editing workflow. Uh, I hope that was interesting for folks. Let us know if you have questions about it. Uh, we're monitoring the chat and would love to uh, bring those to the live stream uh, when we can. And I'm excited to be joined here today uh, with Bernard Rodrigue. Hey, Bernard. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, hi, <laughs> how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for taking the time today to sit down. Of course, the editing workflow is a huge um, piece of what we're bringing to WISE 22.1. There's a tremendous amount of work that's gone into trying to make this an accessible improvement to folks' editing workflows. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, this process that we've been in over the spring and summer where we've been gathering feedback from folks. How, how have we been using that to evolve things? Yes, but actually over the, the last couple of years, we have been uh, getting feedback from user and iterate and iterate uh, to make this product evolve. And really the, the, the customer feedback is at the core of our um, development process. And uh, over the next months and next years, uh, we also will be iterating this product and making it better. And here's a couple of ways you can um, you can reach us and and make a difference uh, in, in making this this new wise new workflow better for you. Um, so first, there's the the air report tool. If you ever encounter a crash, uh, make sure you click the send button because every one of those reports actually reach the dev team. And we take care of uh, reading them, analyzing them, and making sure that we don't uh, have those crash. Um, and uh, again, 
next is uh, from the launcher, there's a help menu and there there's the report a bug. Uh, all those reports uh, are uh, very detailed and they also reach the dev team and we take care also of reading them uh, and making, and, and they help making the product better at the end. Uh, so any uh, bug, any uh, trouble you have, you uh, new workflow, any suggestion also can go there. And also there's the Q&A on the website. Uh, uh, there's a feature request category there. You can ask questions. And we are also monitoring this uh, Q&A. Yeah, and like you said, this this process of feedback you know, starts long before we begin development on a feature, uh, as we've talked about in the past. And of course, during this open preview and beta period, but as you're saying, it extends um, you know, past the release of, of a feature and we're continually monitoring uh, the community and how they're working. And certainly with something like the editing workflow that lands squarely in everyone's uh, center focus, it's something that we really want to hear from folks as they begin to explore. So that's great. We have a question from the channel weave in. It's a, it's the question is, you know, are you able to save these different layouts that you create? Well, there, there's um, uh, six or eight layout. I forgot the number of layouts we have that are uh, available in WISE. And so the same layout that we're, uh, at, that you had before, uh, they're also there today with the new workflow. Uh, but uh, inside the tab itself, there's, it has its own layout system. And uh, yeah, so if, if you if you uh, have any comment about it, uh, make sure uh, you, uh, you reach to us and then we'll uh, read that. Yeah, it's great. And as we mentioned in the video, you know, th the F10 muscle memory of having to switch to that music design layout is gone because now we just bring the default editor for each of those uh, object container types into the the tab based workflow so you have a you have a new um, new world to explore so uh, thanks so much for your time Bernard and congrats to you and your team as we lead up to the launch of 22.1 thank you Great, so next up, we're gonna talk about auto-defined sound banks, and I'm gonna kick off a video from Michael Cooper uh, giving you an introduction to that. All right, Damien. All right, Bernard, this is... Hello, my name is Michael Cooper. I'm a developer at Audio Kinetic, and today I'll be doing an overview of the new sound bank settings introduced in WISE 22.1. For the overview, I'll be using the integration demo project shipped with every release of WISE. To get us started, we'll select the layouts menu and go to the sound bank layout. And before we go over the new sound bank settings, we'll do a quick rundown of the sound bank layout and then the folder structure of the output folder so that afterwards, when we enable each new setting one by one, we could more easily see the difference each setting has. The Soundbank layout closely resembles that of previous releases of WISE with one important difference. That is, in the Soundbank Manager view, our Soundbank list has now been split into two lists. The top list contains uh, the traditional list we've had in uh, previous releases. That is the list of all Soundbanks defined and populated by you, the user. The newly introduced bottom list contains all Soundbanks automatically defined and populated by WISE itself during sound bank generation. Selecting one of the user sound banks, let's say human, we can see on the bottom what items were added to the sound bank to populate it, selected by you, the user, with the options on the right specifying what items to package in the sound bank. And going to the edit tab, we can see the end result of what will be packaged in the sound bank by WISE during sound bank generation. Looking at the sound bank settings, we'll notice that we have the same default settings enabled as in previous releases of WISE, and we've made sure not to enable any of the new features. Having already generated the sound banks and going to the output folder, we'll go to the default output folder, generate sound banks. For the platform for which we generated, Windows, 
And we can see we have the same default folder structure as in previous releases of WISE. That is, the root of the folder contains all sound banks that have non-localized assets. And for sound banks with localized assets, we have a subfolder for each language defined in the project. And for each soundbank file, we have the associated metadata file. And now through the new soundbank settings. Opening the settings will enable the first option, enable auto-defined soundbanks. Essentially, this tells WISE during soundbank generation to automatically define and populate a soundbank for two types of objects. One, every aux bus in the project, and two, every event that is currently not included in a user-defined soundbank. Now that's quite a mouthful, so to demonstrate, we'll generate the sound banks, and then we'll see the differences in the sound bank manager view and in the output folder. So in the sound bank manager view, we'll see that we have one event for which an auto-defined sound bank was created, namely play hello reverb. On the right, we can see that the sound bank has the same name as the event, and the next two columns indicate why the sound bank was defined namely that the event is included in the project for the current platform, Windows, and the event is currently not included in any user-defined sound bank. Going down to the sound bank editor view, we can see that the only item added to the sound bank is the event itself. And to the right, we can see that the only items package will be the event and the associated structures. However, the media will be excluded by design. I'm going to the edit tab, we can see again no media in the sound bank. Now going back to the sound bank manager view, we currently only see events for which audio defined sound banks were created. That's because of uh, applying filters at the moment. Removing these filters gives us a view of all events in the project, and on the right gives us a status of whether an event does have a sound bank generated. And if not, why not? So looking at, for example, the IDM start event, it does not have an auto-defined sound bank. And why is because the event is currently included in a user-defined sound bank, namely interactive music. Now going to the output folder and going to the Windows platform, we see that we have two new folders, namely one folder for each type of object for which we may have auto-defined cell bay. So going to the event folder, we can see that the same folder structure has been recreated, namely non-localized cell banks will be at the root, and we have one folder for each language defined in the project. To demonstrate for the English language, we have our, our play hello reverb event. Going back to the sound bank settings, we'll enable our next option, copy loose stream media. This, as the name suggests, tells WISE during sound bank generation to copy all media files that are not contained in sound banks to the output folder. Prior to WISE 22.1, this operation was done via an external tool called copystreamfiles.exe, uh, and the tool was called via a post generation step. We've removed the tool and incorporated its functionality into the cell bank generation process. So why did we decide to take this route? Uh, a few reasons. One, the tool required the generation of the metadata file soundbanksinfo.xml, uh, currently enabled via these two options. Uh, the file was problematic itself for two reasons. One, it's a monolithic file containing the contents of all generated sound banks. So for large scale projects, this file tended to be quite huge. And two, for teams with multiple members, any change to any sound bank led to changes to soundbanksinfo.xml, which in turn led to source control conflicts when multiple team members were making simultaneous changes. So enabling the option and generating the sound banks, We'll then go to the output folder and notice another difference in wise 22 Dublin's output folder structure. Namely, all media file has been removed from the root and put into a separate media folder. And within that folder, again, we have the same uh, folder structure. 
the non-localized media is in the root and the localized media is contained in the corresponding language folder. Going back to the soundbank settings, we'll have a look at the next two options. The first, create subfolders for generated files. This new optional setting was introduced for large scale projects that tended to have many, many files per folder, which then led to problems with certain source control platforms, which have a cap on the number of files per folder. And the next option, remove unused generated files. Uh, as the name suggests, during soundbank generation, WISE will essentially do a cleanup of the output folder, removing any unnecessary or no longer required soundbank files, the associated metadata, copied media, and subfolders. So enabling the two options and generating soundbanks, we'll have a look at the output folder. And first we'll note that the user Defined sound banks are unaffected by the option. They are still in the same area they were before. We took this approach simply because user sound banks, even for large scale projects, never tended to be an issue. There weren't enough of them per folder to cause an issue with uh, source control tools. However, going to the media folder, we'll note that media files are no longer at the root, but rather divided into subfolders. Uh, quickly going into one folder, we'll note that the name of the folder corresponds to the first two digits of the name of all files within the folder. And the same rule applies to the root for non-localized assets and each language folder, uh, the same rule applies. Now we chose to do that for media files because there were tended to be many media files in one folder. And with the introduction of auto-defined sound banks, we large scale projects may end up in the same situation. So we applied the same rule. But there's a little caveat in this case, because the name of the files is not the ID of the file itself, where the 37 came from. For that information, we have to go back to WISE and you'll note that the undefined sound bank and ID is listed in this column. The first two digits in this case is 37. Going back here, We'll note that we're in the folder 37. Finally, going back to the cell bank settings for the less newly introduced option, use source control for generated files. As the name suggests, during cell bank generation, WISE will do any necessary add, remove, and modify source control operations for any files that have been newly introduced, removed, or modified. This includes cell bank files, metadata files, and copied media files if enabled. Aside from the set newly introduced uh, cell bank settings, a few more changes have been made to the generated files themselves. Namely, we've now added content hash to every generated file, whether it be the cell bank file itself, any metadata file, and media files as well. So during any cell bank generation, WISE will only modify files as required, and more importantly, will only generate source control operations as required. That does it for the new features. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy them. And thank you for that. Uh, we are here with Michael Cooper, senior software developer at Audio Kinetic. Hey. Uh, hello, Damien. How's it going? Welcome. It's going great. Thanks for being here and for the incredible overview of the editing workflow. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Auto-defined sound banks. Welcome. Uh, and how do you think auto-defined sound banks changes the way we think about asset management? So basically, we're just offering a second way of doing things to our sound designers, right? So essentially we're removing an extra layer of management on their, on their end. So instead of, you know, that, that traditional barrier we've designed between uh, our sound designer and their engineers, where they have a, a layer of states, RTPCs, event names, post these, I know what to do on my end. Um, that also necessitates knowing and loading the proper banks to have your events. We're essentially removing that. So, Right off the bat, what the what twenty two dot one will offer if you do opt into auto banks and you know go all in, uh, 
essentially with the name of your event, all you have to do is load the now uh, auto-defined bank for that event, uh, do a prepare event, and away you go, you have everything you need. So that's the bare bone implementation of, of taking advantage of this. Or you can go a bit more extreme like we do in our uh, Unreal integration for 22.1, which I believe the source code is available, uh, in which we make use of auto-defined sound banks, but also the metadata that uh, accompanies it, the JSON files. And we can do some extra um, optimizations. For example, if your event uh, includes a switch container, well, the metadata will specify for each switch value what media assets you need, and our integration takes care of loading only what's necessary at any given time. So, yeah. you know, just offering another way of doing things. Yeah, and there's so much there, right? It's, in, you know, dissolving the invisible wall between uh, WISE and the game when it comes to assets. It's about that granular asset management of, you know, only loading what you need at the time. We all know that resources are precious. And also just allowing for the configurability as a developer to really work with WISE in a way that makes sense in your pipeline, right? right. So there's a ton there out of the box that really speaks to uh, you know, this, this freedom with how you manage your assets. Um, cool. That's, uh, that's a great overview and again, a fantastic demo uh, about auto-defined sound banks. Uh, folks can actually get their hands on it right now uh, as part of the 22.1 beta. Uh, it's there in the authoring. It's uh, part of our Unreal integration. Uh, so definitely, if you're interested in getting a sneak peek on that before the full release coming this fall, uh, jump in. Thanks so much for your time, Michael. My pleasure. Great to have you. Thanks again. All right. Later. Cool. So we are moving swiftly through this first hour of product facing demos and interviews, you know, surfacing folks from um, audio kinetic development staff uh, responsible in part for these different features. And the next one I'm really excited to talk about is a plugin that we have for real-time early reflections, but I'll let uh, software developer Tali Kakikian explain it even better. Hello, everyone. My name is Tali Kiklikian. I'm part of the Spatial Audio team, and this is a presentation of the Reflect plugin in WISE version 2022.1. So before we start, let's put the Reflect plugin in context. Here we show an impulse response of a sound emitted in a room. The first peak heard, shown in red here, is the sound itself taking a direct path to the listener. Over time, the sound will hit surfaces before reaching the listener. We call those peaks that we show here at green, early reflections. They will inform the listener of the shape of the room and the proximity to the reflective surfaces in this case, the walls. In WISE, the early reflections are handled by the Reflect plugin. Depending on the travel distance, the plugin will place the sound at different points in time. And depending on the distance attenuation and surface absorption, the plugin will adjust the volume and filter each one of them. The Reflect plugin attenuates the sound of early reflections with a set of curves. Emitted sounds already have attenuation curves, so what it means is we need to author two sets of similar curves for each sound when we're using reflect. Our assumption here is that the emitted sound and its early reflections could use one set of curves, the curves that are set in the attenuation share set of the sound. With the help of audio objects introduced in 2022.1, we can retrieve the attenuation curves of the sound sent to the reflect plugin. So we decided to simplify the Reflect plugin setup by letting you choose each sound's attenuation curves instead of authoring a new one. Let's jump into a demo. When the so here I have a small demo where there is a room with four walls and an obstacle in the back. There's a listener, an emitter, and the listener is also emitting footsteps. Had no limitations. 
I was greatly impressed with the device, but questioned its show value. Warner Brothers, their efforts tolerated then but envied now, answered that question boldly. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to add Reflect to this demo. So first we stop profiling. Then we go to the Master Mixer Hierarchy, right-click on Master Audio Bus or any other bus that makes sense in your project, New Child, Presets, Simplified Early Reflection Auxiliary Bus. Then we go find our sound. In this demo, the voice and the footsteps are under the same actor mixer. In the General Settings tab, we set the Early Reflection Aux Bus to the one we just created. And that's it. Now if we profile again, and launch the demo, we can see the different reflection paths in the Game Object 3 viewer. When the Vitaphone was in its laboratory stage, a man had to debate me, fairly kidnapped me to get me down to hear it. We had ourselves completely sold on the theory that the picture was all in all, had no limitations. I was greatly impressed with the device, but questioned its show value. Warner Brothers, their efforts tolerated when we now answered that question boldly. Successfully. Successfully. Let's look at our reflect curves. In the voice inspector, I can select the voice and click on the reflect effect to open the reflect effect editor. We can see a list of image sources with different information, such as their attenuation share set. Here, all the curves are using their attenuation. So I can see here there's the distance volume one that looks the same as the attenuation share set. There's a no distance low pass filter just as the attenuation share set and for example diffraction is using the project obstruction curves so if we go and look at them we can see that they're similar um, the same goes for the diffraction low pass filter for example if i make some footstep sounds uh, we can look at those as well uh, we can see that there is more um, image sources that were added. So one of them is a footsteps one using a different attenuation. And we can see that there's a difference between uh, some curves. In the attenuations button, there is the two attenuations that are being used right now. So if I open the footsteps attenuation, we can see that the footstep one has a distance low pass filter. The emitter one didn't use one. Their distance volume uh, curves are different. We can also see that they have different max distances. So it means that the footsteps cannot have a reflection if they're not near a, a wall since their max distance is lower. Now, let's say that I want to change how it sounds because I feel like the voice is a little bit intense. I can do some distance warping. What warping does is that it emphasizes and de-emphasizes the effects. So if we warp distance, we'll make the image sources further or closer to the listener. Completely sold on the theory that the picture was all in all, had no limitations. I was greatly impressed with the device, but questioned its show value. Warner Brothers, their efforts tolerated them, but Envy now answered that question boldly. Bravely, Bravely, successfully, they, they plunged, staking, staking everything, everything, stopping it in nothing. They put the show. I feel like this is better. The distance low pass filter curve is inexistent for the emitter, but I feel like the reflection should have some, so I could change it to custom. This way, uh, I can have a curve and do anything I could do before. Just move it around. And as we can see, there's a slimmer curve here in the graph. And this one is the distance warping one. So let's adjust it a little bit. Transactions of Society of Motion Picture Engineers, Volume 12, Number 35, 1928. Diffraction curves are not affected by the distance warping. There's a second warping value that we can tweak. We had ourselves completely sold on the theory that the picture was all in all had no limitations. I was greatly impressed with the device, but questioned its show value. Warner Brothers... So that's it! This is a simplified reflect for WISE 22.1. Hope you like it, and thank you! And we're back. Hey, Tali. Good to see you. Hi. Good to see you, too. Welcome 
to the Worldwide Online Expo. Uh, thanks for the overview of Reflect. Uh, what, uh, what, what a bunch of cool new accessibility features to bring to what is kind of a complex system, but really brings a level of an enhancement to that kind of, you know, understanding your environment. Um, where can folks get uh, their ears on Reflect? Uh, they can use Reflect in the Wise Audio Lab, a sample using Unreal, uh, in the Wise Adventure game, sample using Unity. Um, and the demo I used is maybe going to be available soon. I don't know when, but we're working on it. A quick integration demo with Reflect, but that's not in 2001. <laughs> Yeah, well, in, in each of those samples that we provide across Unreal and Unity, we have these areas where Reflect has been tuned in order to give you a, a clear impression of its value under those different circumstances. Um, you can toggle it on and off. Um, and, and as you were saying, we now have these warping controls that you can use to emphasize and de-emphasize reflect creatively or in order to meet whatever your expectations are. There's a question from the chat I'm bringing in. Can you RTPC those? Can you add a real-time parameter control to? Yes, um, on the warping values, yes, you can add an RT RTPC, uh, but the warping value will and the RTPC will be the same for every uh, sound that's using the same reflect effect, but then if it's a problem, you can use different ones, new uh, aux buses. Exactly. Great. Yeah. Well, and, and again, these are creative controls meant to uh, empower people to, you know, create this experience that matches whatever they're trying to support uh, visually on screen. Uh, so thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it's great to have you and the team working on Reflect as we continue to evolve these technologies. So thanks again for being part of today's event. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we are just going to continue moving swiftly through this, uh, focusing on another new offering as part of WISE 22.1, something that evolves our object-based audio workflow that we uh, released as part of WISE 22, 21.1. Uh, and this will be a, a presentation about the 3D Audio Bed Mixer plugin. And I'll let Phil Milo take it away and tell you more about it. Hi, I'm Phil Milo. And I'm here to show you the new 3D Audio Bed Mixer plugin that comes with WISE 2022.1. To understand how the plugin works and what it's used for, it's best to start with an example. Here I have a modified version of the WISE Audio Lab project open. All ambient sounds currently playing are routed to the objects bus. In order to replicate a game environment with lots of point sources positioned in 3D space. This objects bus then feeds into an intermediary bus with a parametric EQ on it, which goes out to the master audio bus. We look at the profiler, everything looks like it's working as expected. The sources are mixed together, then an EQ is applied to it. But when the user chooses to turn on spatial sound in Windows, suddenly WISE reacts by enabling 3D audio, and buses are now processing individual audio objects. This means that the parametric EQ is now processed separately for over 50 audio signals. This is a waste of resources, because a lot of these objects eventually get mixed down by the audio device, which only supports 16 objects maximum. Ideally, this mix down should occur before the parametric EQ step. In WISE 21.1, this was only possible by changing the bus hierarchy and route sources contributing to the main mix to a different bus 
than those contributing to the system audio objects. But in large projects being migrated from a channel-based workflow to an object-based workflow, this is often an impractical solution. In WISE 2022.1, you can instead place a 3D audio bed mixer plugin at the point where you want the mixing done. In our case, it's right before the parametric EQ. And now you can see that there are only two parametric EQ instances. But why two? Let's find out by going to the Audio Object Profiler view. We can see that the intermediary bus passes all sources intact to the plugin. And the plugin takes this input and produces two objects, one for the main mix and one for the pass-through mix. And that is why we have two parametric EQs, one for each of these mixes. By tweaking the properties of the plugin, I can influence how it will mix down the objects. For example, I can choose to let 16 objects pass through and mix down the rest. In the Audio Object Profiler view, we can see that the plugin now produces two mixes and 16 individual sources that are eligible to become system audio objects when they reach the audio device. I can also choose to opt out of the pass-through mix at this point and even override the channel configuration of the produced main mix. To sum up, the 3D Audio Bed Mixer plugin is useful in mixing scenarios where a large number of audio objects are passing through intermediary buses, and we want to mix some of these audio objects together early to reduce the processing load of the audio pipeline. Awesome. Welcome back, and I'm um, joined here by Philip Milo, software developer at Audio Kinetic. Hey, Phil, how's it going? Hi, uh, it's good. How about you? Ah, so good today. Thank you. Uh, so, awesome overview of the new 3D audio bed mixer plugin. Uh, uh, something coming to Wise 22.1. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the sound categories we would expect to. Um, to control with that. Yeah, so this is a use case where you're probably going to be using this plugin when you have a lot of different categories of sound going through the same bus, like I mentioned in the video. And usually it's gonna be uh, a lot of ambient uh, 3D positioned uh, sounds. Uh, with a, some of them should be going to the main mix, some of them should be sent separately, but they're all going through the same bus. So in this case, uh, something that I didn't mention in the video is that uh, this, um, this use case is gonna work really well if you use it in conjunction with the Wise Output Settings uh, plugin. So if you categorize your sounds using this plugin, uh, the, the new 3D audio bed mixer is going to take that into account and properly mix those different categories of sound accordingly. Awesome, yeah, and it, it's really about, you know, shaping and optimizing your audio objects as they flow through the pipeline to arrive at the destination um, so that they sound and are as spatially precise as, as you intend, uh, so. Great, and this is a tool that we've put in place after hearing from people who've begun authoring with audio objects in 21.1. Um, we hear a lot from folks out there who put their hands on this new object-based pipeline and really have uh, 
custom built this to purpose in order to facilitate things that people are reaching for across their different titles. Uh, yeah. 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 This is this is really a a great example of uh, listening to to customer feedback because this idea actually came from one of, of our customers. So so we know that it fits at least one person's uh, use case. <laughs> Exactly. We think that folks are going to love having this level of control over audio objects in the WISE pipeline coming up in 22.1. So thanks so much for your help with developing this plugin for folks. And thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you, Damien. Take care. Awesome. Well, we're moving swiftly through this first hour of WISE product, and we've done a lot of talking about some of the high-level features coming to 22.1. If you step backward in time, we've had a couple other focused live streams that talk about features that will be released uh, as part of the full release this fall as well. So you can dig back in our Wise Up On Air hands-on archives to, to look more in depth with the editing workflow uh, and other features like paste properties, uh, some of the great uh, auto-defined sound banks uh, episode has a tremendous deep dive into how that's gonna look for you if you migrate your project to the new auto-defined sound bank workflow. Uh, and we just had a super deep dive all the way to the microsecond CPU performance live stream that is in, of absolute interest to anyone who's ever wanted to lift the hood and go all the way down to understand why's and how it works at that very lowest level of job scheduling uh, across cores and multi-cores. So please dig back into those archives and take a look at what we have there. We're also scheduling several live streams stretching out into the next few months. Uh, the new product that we'll be announcing here in just moments will get its own hands on on November 10th. Uh, we'll also have a hands-on with our ReWise. This is a ReaperWise integration that helps carry uh, sounds between Reaper and Wise. If, uh, if you're interested at all in making that a uh, core piece of your pipeline, you'll want to tune in for that on November 17th. Additionally, we'll may be making updates to the WISE Adventure game, uh, allowing for the flow of audio objects through that. And so WISE Adventure game, object-based audio hands-on coming up December 1st. Uh, the WISE authoring API and WISE authoring query language, Wappy and Wackle. Uh, these are fantastic offerings for folks who are looking to build more speed into their workflows and pipelines by leveraging what we provide uh, to reach into your project and get information and streamline workflows. So deep dive coming up on December 8th about that, followed by a little bit of news uh, and a peek into our web audio offerings. Uh, if the words WISE and web audio get you excited, you'll want to tune in on December 15th because we're going to give you a peek at where we're at with that and talk more about what's coming in the future. And then at the beginning of next year to be scheduled, we'll be talking about GME and our voice chat pipeline. Uh, so absolutely put these on your calendar, get subscribed, and we'll keep you posted on when these exciting things are coming out. Uh, so we're just nearing the top of the hour, and I'm going to get an introduction in uh, so that we can land right on time. But I'd like to welcome to the Wise Worldwide Online Expo, Simon Ashby, head of product here at Audio Kinetic. Hey, Simon. Hey, hi, Damien. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to see you on the live stream. Thanks for joining us today. Excitement is high over here. <laughs> I, uh, I'm fired up 
to uh, reveal uh, this exciting new thing. Uh, but first, tell us a little bit about your position at AudiKinetic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, as you as you shown, I'm head of product at AudioKinetic. Um, I'm one of the co-founders as well. So I've been there since the beginning and uh, seeing AudioKinetic evolving and the product offering evolving as well. And it's always uh, exciting to uh, arrive at this moment where, okay, we're ready to show something else. And this time around, as you'll see in a minute or two, it's quite different from what we used to, to do. So we're still in audio, of course, we're still talking to the same audience, but in a different manner. So uh, quite exciting. Yeah, well, and as you mentioned, it's not every day that, uh, that we are announcing something new here at Audio Kinetic. Uh, so new product release. Yes. It's not yeah. a plugin. It's not an application. It's not directly related to WISE. Why do you think sound designers will love it? Uh -huh. Well, there are plenty of reasons um, for this, <laughs> and we'll go through. Uh, well, we'll go through the details and how this thing is is made up and and so on. And uh, through that, I, I think uh, the the value and and why we believe sound designers will be excited should uh, reveal itself. Um, and and of course, what will be really interesting is we have people monitoring the, the questions in the chat on YouTube and Twitch. So uh, yeah, don't hesitate to uh, post your questions there. And at the end of the presentation, we have plenty of time for Q&A, basically. It's the, it's the last portion of the live stream. And uh, and we're used to do eight hours live stream, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. I remember the days, you know, it was early on and you've got uh, kids jumping on the couch in the background and, uh, you know, people all over the world tuning in. Uh, and so it's, again, a gift to be able to extend this online expo uh, year after year to try and bring people into what we're doing here at Audio Kinetic. Uh, yeah. I know I show up excited uh, to work and develop these things for the community and to be able to talk about them finally in the case of uh, you know WISE 22.1 or this new product um, it's just uh, great to be here today so it is well uh, what do you think so um, just before showing slides and going mm -hmm. to the detail we have our teaser video uh, code name hero video here to show it so it's a it's a 50 something second long video in which we present all the bits and pieces that are there that to, that that tips on what is this product while piquing the curiosity of people and while exposing what business people will refer to as ups the unix usp unique selling proposition oh yeah so we tried to accomplish all these goals in 50 something seconds and we have it ready for you today so let's start with that and then we'll dig into uh, all the all the components sounds great here we go Simon, wow, <laughs> an incredible introduction to a new product here at Audio Kinetic. Tell us more about Strata. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, okay, so let's go into uh, 
into uh, more of the details. So as the video is kind of alluding to, is that Strata is uh, the first sound effects library that's been conceived, produced, designed to be distributed and used in its channel, in its multi-channel format. And contrarily to all the other um, sound effects library where essentially you get the rendered file of those projects. And for some libraries, you, you do have uh, the construction kits, for example, so bits and pieces, but never into its full uh, multi-track format where you have access to everything, like modifying every, uh, every media item and clips and fades and effect settings to change and isolating layers and all that. It's all at your fingertips now to really customize the content uh, to exactly fit the purpose of the project you're working on. So, so, so that's the novelty, and that's where we believe we are really offering something uh, really interesting and novel to to our audience and to any sound designers, and especially our audience for sure. So, another way to talk about that, we we use the, a food metaphor internally here, where we say, well, not only with Strata Library you get the meal, so all the rendered files uh, for you, but you also get the recipe the know-how and all the ingredients. So with that, well, it's quite easy to swap ingredients and change things around and make things a bit spicier or maybe sweeter, you know. Um, you have absolute control over all the variables that make up the sound that you that you receive from that. And something interesting, just a, a, an aside here. So before, before now, <laughs> before revealing it to the public, we contacted a few uh, people for a, an early access to Strata because we wanted uh, feedback from uh, from professionals in the industry about the product so that we can adjust things and, and make it the best product we can uh, for that. And we had a bunch of indie developers. We had AAA developers. We had um, a couple of academic um, institutions out there. And among the audience, we had like junior sound designers to really experienced sound designers, like people with uh, decades of experience in sound design and, and known names in the industry. And what was systematic when we've done debriefs with these companies and these people is every one of them, from the most junior to the most senior, they all said, it is so great to see how other world-class sound designers are making their sounds, how it's built. And they all got a few things here and there saying, oh, this is how you achieve that kind of effects for this specific type of sound, you know? So, so that was really enlightening and, and really satisfying to see that, okay, the, the, the know-how transfer, uh, which is something we had an intuition for, but seeing everybody responding to that, saying, wow, it's really great to, to learn and, and, and to become better at this craft. So, so that's, that's really, uh, really great. Um, so we say it's in, it's in multi-track format. So some people were intrigued. They were thinking that we developed our own, um, our own DAW. So uh, maybe that's a project for the future, but it's not something we've done. What we decided to do is to use an actual DAW that's already on the market. And for us, when we evaluated the options we had and the various objectives that we had, Reaper just became the obvious choice quite rapidly for a series of reasons. And so first of it is a few years ago, we sent a survey to, to WISE users. And one of the questions was, what is your DA that you're using uh, on, on your day-to-day? And at the time, we had more than 50% of our users uh, working with Reaper. And knowing that Reaper is really in the rise in terms of adoption, it's certainly a larger number than that today. Um, so that serves well the, the, the first audience that we have, definitely. And what is really nice with Reaper is you can create extensions uh, and basically um, add workflows and, and or add customized workflow for specific things. And if you notice a couple of weeks ago, we released Rewise, which is an extension that facilitates the transfer of files from Reaper to Wise. And what we will start doing now that, now that uh, Strata is out is starting working on Strata specific 
Reaper extension as well to enhance workflow and to enhance you know some some of the things that are um, that we can address in terms of rapidity or getting access to your content uh, faster or in a better informed ways. And that that's what's part of the feedback that we received as well from the uh, the early access uh, people that that played with it. So uh, so that's great. And finally, yeah, Reaper is just so powerful, so customizable. And as you can see on their their own website for the price, it's re it's not so much. So it's really affordable and and easily accessible to uh, to anybody. So so that's why we chose Reaper. And if you look, so. It's a sound effects library we're doing. And as any library out there, it's comprised of collections. And those collections are theme based. So uh, collections on footsteps, on modern weapons, on UI sounds, on ambience, you know, so it, it's categorized like that. So when we look into one collection, we pick one collection, the way it's made, it starts with a main project. That's how we call it. So the main project, it's a Reaper project. And you see here all the color-coded tracks. They are all uh, components of that collections. And in the Reaper vocabulary, uh, the, what you're seeing actually uh, here are just the other Reaper projects that are called sub-projects. So the idea with that is you pick one of these, so let's say this one here at the bottom, and when you double click on this sub project, it opens the corresponding Reaper project. And from there, that's where you work. So the, the main project is really just to browse the content of your collection, or one way to browse the content of your collection. And then you dig into it, and now you have the full Reaper project at your disposal with every components and every clips and, and, and everything accessible. Uh, at your fingertips there. So this is systematic. All the collections are built uh, in this fashion. Now, if we look into a bit more in details, so you're part of a sub project and you can see that we the project is configured to facilitate fast rendering of variations. So this is on the vertical axis um, where you see a series like four uh, regions there. So you can already imagine like a random container with four variations of your sound. And on the horizontal axis, those are our stems or the layers that each sound is comprised. And so, for example, what we're looking at right now is a pistol um, project. So that pistol sound is comprised of a body layer, a mechanism, transient, punch, tail, and, and cinematic. And we tried to be as systematic as possible with this approach. So the first uh, layer is always the body one or the, the main element. And then we have detail layers in blue and orange below. And at the bottom, it's always the cinematic layer. The cinematic is the one with the you know the, the subwoofer and the big bass drop and so and by default it's muted because it's a bit over the top <laughs> but when you need it you just unmute and you re-render your sound with the cinematic and here you go right so so this is the framework for uh, each of the collection and if you look at the right hand side we're looking at the markers and regions view and from there the markers are there to quickly navigate from a sound to to another and the region separates, um, it's basically each of the layers are separated by region. And they are named in a way that simplifies at the rendering time, uh, will simplify with your naming convention. So all the region names are respecting the UCS naming convention, and the regions are the FX name portion of that. So if you're, uh, if you're not uh use with ucs it's a standard that emerged uh, a few years ago but is starting to become a standard these days especially among sound effects library uh, vendor but there's more and more game developer as well that realize that the ucs structure is so well done um to categorize your content that it's a good approach for your own naming convention in your uh, for your own game productions for example and here you can see that all the render files that you get access from Strata are using the UCS format, but also all the source files have also been named uh, respecting that format. So, so later, if you put that into SoundMiner or some other sound library and software, well, it's respecting that format and it's really easy to browse and, and find your content 
in a meaningful and predictable uh, ways. So this is, um, in essence, uh, what you get when you uh, subscribe to Strata and how the projects are presented, the sub-projects and, and the various collections. Um, so now, what is also included with Strata? So as I mentioned uh, before, there's Rewise, which is our first Reaper extension that helps transferring sounds to Wise. And without going into details, uh, there's, there's, a, there's already a live stream on that. Um, but there's four main components to it. Uh, so first of all, we're uh, leveraging the Reaper wildcard system. And this is another thing fantastic with Reaper. Uh, so by leveraging these wildcard system, then we can do tons of things. And for Rewise, the way we've done it is we're associating, actually the user can associate uh, Reaper wildcards to Wise containers. Uh, so blend containers could be the region name and your sound could be this other portion and the project name could be your uh, blend container, you know, that kind of thing. So you, you decide for that. And depending on the type of sound you're creating, you may want to create presets for these association between wise objects and Reaper wildcards. So you create your presets, you recall them and, and off you go. And then as you transfer content to WISE, uh, sometime you might have some content conflicting or something happening. So there's a way where you say, okay, what do you do if the object already exists in WISE? Do you want to abort the transfer? Do you want to replace what's in WISE? You know, that kind of behaviors. And finally, the really neat aspect of it is before committing, before saying transfer to WISE, you can preview the sounds that you identified in Reaper that you want to render and you want to transfer to, uh, to Wise on the other side, you can preview the hierarchy. And if there's any conflict at that point, it will show up, the color change there, and you're really in control of what will happen in Wise once you'll commit to transfer there. So, uh, so you can adjust and, and so on. So that's a really neat uh, Reaper extension that, that we created. And, and that's one of the... Uh, components uh, part of Strata. We also have plugins with Strata. So we are bundling the IEM plugins. So the IEM plugin suite, it's a series of 20 plugins, plus or minus one. Uh, so there's a lot of plugins in there. We're not using them all. We're using four or five maybe of them, especially for the ambient uh, collections because we're leveraging their stereo encoder and the, the ambisonic um, coding and all that. So there's IEM. Uh, there's also all the WISE plugin that we converted to VST3 plugins as well. And now it's packaged with Strata. So you get access to that. You can see that we uh, ramp up the or change the look and feel for the these effects. So that's the room verb uh, effect that you're seeing right now. And we also are leveraging Enrage. So Enrage is a plugin that Boom library uh, created, and it's a it's a gigantic plug. Actually, it's not a plugin; it's more a plugin maker where you've got fifty something uh, DSP components or module, and you're building your own effects chain inside of Enrage, and you can do almost anything with that. It's really really powerful and flexible, and and this is part of it. And for us, so. In order to create and produce and, and distribute a sound effects library in multi-track format, it was super important that out of the box, once you subscribe and you get access to it, you have all the plugins necessary to run those Reaper projects and hear exactly what you're supposed to hear, right? How they've been designed. So every sound effects has been designed using these effects that you're seeing there. Now, once you have your content, if you want to use your own effects, replace, add, and so on, you're free to do that. But you know that out of the box, you press play, and you get exactly the sound you're, you're supposed to have uh, using these effects there. So there's that into, uh, into the mix. Um, OK, so we talk about how it looks like in Reaper, uh, the plugins you receive, the Rewise thing. Now let's talk about the production, like creating uh, all those collections in a novel way, in a multi-track format. So this is in itself, it's been a, it's been a discovery and a, it's been a, a fantastic journey, I, I'd say, in there. And 
Audio Kinetic is a software company, right? So we had the choice of, okay, ramping up a division inside Audio Kinetic and, and do our own sound design and so on. But this is, we were not seeing that as the best way to serve our users and, and, and our audience. Uh, rapidly for us, it, it, it was clear that we needed to work with a partner and we wanted to work with the best partner possible out there. And the short list, the, the list was quite short. And on top of that list, uh, we had Boom Library. Uh, we knew each other for a long time, uh, every year or a few times per year, we, we had discussions and we were looking for ways to work together. And eventually when the, the Strata idea and the project evolves internally, um, we meet with Boom and discuss and presented our project and we're saying, we're looking for a partner, we would like working with you. Uh, but it's a long shot because it's a new way of doing things and you will kind of expose all your layers and your your know-how, you know, and, and all that. So how do you feel about that and so on? And and the discussion went on and it was uh, it was really interesting. And and then the answer basically that they gave us is it's a it's a crazy idea, but we we like crazy ideas and we want to work with you on that and let's do it basically. So, uh, so that was great. Um, and, and just to put that in context as well, so Strata um, is not just attached to Boom necessarily. It's, it's our first production partner, and we're glad to, to do it with, with, with Boom. Uh, but eventually, we want to bring other partners as well to the equation to complete the whole uh, offering, basically. Um, and there, but but starting everything with Boom uh, was, was great. And uh, and okay, and we have a video. Uh, so we'll show we'll just play back the uh, our behind the scene or the making of uh, Strata video, in which you will see Axel and Pierre from Boom talking about how it went on on their side and so on. And on our side, there's Simon Pressy and myself talking about that project as well. And it's a five or six minute uh, video. Uh, so uh, we'll play that and that should give you uh, an additional outlook of what it is um, behind the entire project and, and what's part of the offering basically. So Damien, if you're ready, we can play that video. <laughs> Interestingly, the idea for Strata happened during a meeting where we're talking about something totally different and we just had this haha -ha moment, I don't know, the things connected, and we just said Strata. Strata Library is the first library of sound effects that's been designed from the ground up to be uh, produced and distributed in multi-track format. And by that we mean providing all the tracks, all the clips edits, all the effects, so it's full flexibility at your fingertips, basically. Strata is cake and the ingredients put together by a master chef, prepped ready for you to bake. So you can play with the ingredients, recombine them in different rounds, and produce a completely different cake, as opposed to existing libraries, which are the cake. It really takes away a lot of work that is not fun, and not repeating the same kind of boring steps in editing and cropping, and you know all these things that are not very creative. You have more time and more energy to then start working on the creative sound design, which is what I think all sound designers are most interested in. Audio Kinetic has always considered providing content to, to its users, but we didn't want to do exactly the same thing that all the other content providers are doing out there. How can we improve productivity, enabling our users to be better artists and be able to produce more content in less time? For us, as a software company, it was quite obvious that we would do that project in partnership with an established content provider out there. It's a typical games industry story, I guess. Throughout all the years, we've been going to GDC or you know some other shows, and we always met people from Autokinetic. We noticed that there is a common ground and that there's also a big potential because we have all that content and Audiokinetic has all the tech. All of a sudden we had, you know, all the parts that we needed came together. We just put all the cards on the table, everything was clear, and we just said, okay, let's do that project together. The number one concern that I had in terms of how would they receive that idea was sharing their content, sharing the multi-track, sharing their know-how and their IP, basically. 
We don't really believe in trade secrets. Um, the whole idea of Boom Library when we started was to be the first ones to offer source recordings. But we've been asked about, hey, how do you do your design, your final design, how do you do that? And that is something that we couldn't share so far. And now we finally came up with something together with AudioKinetic that gives us the chance to um, share this. And then um, there is new, unique and individual sound design coming out of it. In, in interactive media, quite a lot of your sounds, the end user is experiencing thousands of times and you want to immerse them in a more realistic environment. So in sound design for video games, we are having to produce sounds that are different every time they're played. So for example, for footsteps, um, we have 48 projects. We have seven different actions per footstep category, so per shoe or on a generic surface, and then 16 variations per action, per shoe, per surface. That totals up to 9,888 sounds if you render them, and that's a lot more source sounds even in the projects because you have uh, different microphone perspectives, and um, that's stuff we don't render with it. So that's, uh, I think, quite a lot. That's something that is common in the AAA in the side of the industry, but is beyond the, the budgets of small, sort of smaller game designs. So we're able to give people the opportunity to produce AAA quality audio without a AAA budget. So we're working with Reaper, and Reaper has a lot of things going for it. It's super flexible. First, it's scriptable. It's also the DA that is uh, more and more adopted in the interactive world. And it's, it's, not, it's cheap. It's really not expensive. So, so for us, it was just the best DA out there to, to produce that content. When we started that project, we were a bit naive with the approach, thinking that, oh, they probably have their, their multi-track projects already. We can just reuse that and package it. But that was, it's not what Strata is. We've done a lot of tidying up. We've made all of the Reaper sessions be structured very similarly with every sound named accordingly, every track named sensibly. So we're using the universal category system to name all of the files. And we've produced a system that allows you to automatically name your rendered files very easily with less opportunity for human error. If there are any difficulties, I think we run into all of them. So we had the whole COVID situation, of course, making recordings, uh, the planning of recordings really, really difficult. We completely underestimated the workload. Also, of course, once we started, we had like internal feature requests from our own team because we wanted to improve uh, stuff. Yeah, that was challenging because we are not that many people and um, it is a quite a big project. Any sound designers in, from the linear world will also benefit from Strata Library, just because so many times when you're, you're fetching for, for sounds, for sources, and you get a sound that is almost perfect, but there's this little thing ringing, or this, this little artifact that you don't like, or you, you're mainly fixing the sounds that you're getting instead of just isolating the parts that you actually need and removing what is not right. We use Strata since the first module was done. And that's always a very good sign because if we need it on our side, you know, as pros in the game sound design world, then usually other people will need it as well. All right, welcome back. And what a great behind the scenes on the production. We're joined here by Axel and Pierre from Boom. Welcome to the live stream. Hi, Thanks Hello. for having us, Damon. And for having us. <laughs> uh, so great to have everyone together here as we launch Strata out into the world. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question up front uh, to, to the Boom folks, you know, Boom. It's it's a industry standard, well-established sound library collections out there in the world. What was interesting about uh, Strata? What made that worth taking the leap with us on? I'll take that one. So um, first off, it's super exciting to be here. And finally, after 
several years of work actually you know the behind scenes uh, doesn't show uh, everything of course it's it was a very long journey and a very positive one um, the initial idea why we said we definitely want to do that was twofold the first one was we like to work with really nice people and autokinetic people are really nice people at least all the ones we know so the ones that are still hiding you better be nice too um, and like Simon said uh, we uh, we have been in contact for many years. You know, you you, you see each other at conferences and uh, all sorts of shows. And um, we you know we also know Wise, of course, and uh, have been you know in contact with it. Um, and then finally, uh, there was this idea um, coming up, saying, "Hey, we want to do a sound library that kind of opens the treasure box for every sound designer and shows uh, you know how things are being done." And uh, we have always been very, very much in favor of this kind of transparent and collaborative approach. I mean, the whole idea when we started Boom Library 12 years ago was that we as game sound designers didn't have the right tools for, to do our game sound design because all the sound libraries were very much, you know, for linear media and film and so forth. And at the same time, we said, well, if we're going to create something for us internally, why don't we share it? Um, and that was, you know, how the first collections were released um, and uh, sharing, uh, well, sharing is caring, you know that, but sharing not only the designed versions, be uh, because that's, that would be pretty much like the standard uh, sound effects library by the time, but really sharing what we need as source files for our sound design. And that is, you know, like, well, what Boom is with the construction kits. It's uh, a lot of variations per sound. It's very high quality so that you can process it heavily without losing quality. Um, and it is good metadata, which is consistent so that you can find your stuff. And um, we directly shared this because that was the product in a way. And we only got positive feedback. It was always like, hey, this is super interesting. And that's also why we, uh, we delivered the design versions with it. Um, because we wanted to show, okay, this is what we can do out of this construction kit library. This is the designs that we do. And when we now listen back to what we did in the beginning, it's uh, really like 12 years ago. So um, the design versions have become much stronger, I would say, and the construction kits as well. So there's a very good, um, you know, kind of quality evolution there. Um, but we always lack the possibility to share the real behind scenes again like you know what is uh, the DAW session and we had requests from our customers asking hey can you show us or can you share a session where you have produced this and this design sound from this and this collection and we're like well should we do something we don't know it's very difficult because there's so many different DAWs and it's not really our forte to you know prepare this and do some so kind of software around it or link it to something I mean we're the sound design sound library design guys so um, again, we were not really focused on doing something like this, but the idea was hanging around and there was just, it was just a matter of finding the right time and having the right partner. And, uh, well, when Simon came up with it and Simon for us is, um, he, he stands for audio kinetics. So <laughs> hello, Simon. Um, he came up, he said, we want to do this. And we said, finally, finally, we can do it and share everything. And uh, for us now with the release, it's only the beginning of a journey because right now we are sharing how we design the stuff. Um, and now it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, what, what do people do with it? What's the feedback? What's new? Perhaps there's new ideas coming out of this. Uh, I already saw in the chat that there's, you know, questions about, hey, can this be used for educational, for example? And I would say, yes, well, of course. That's exactly the reason why we do this is to train, not to train people actively, but, you know, to just share the knowledge. That's it. Open up uh, uh, and share the knowledge and just see what, what, what comes next. And hopefully this is like perhaps even a new standard format for sound library deliveries on the long run that you don't simply deliver final stuff but that you deliver the core of your work and share it with people. Yeah, well, and there's been a ton of exciting engagement in the chat talking about this educational opportunity, you know, and, and the gift of being presented with all of this different, uh, you know, contextual information about sound design. It really is something special. And I'll turn it over to Simon and ask, you know, boom, as a partner, like, why? How did that happen? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mentioned that a bit uh, just before the, the video, but um, but yeah, for for uh, for us, well, we needed to work with 
people that know what they're doing in terms of sound design and no one and so on so and and boom i think you started in the video game company right through dynamedia and and your your company so you you always since the beginning you created everything with interactive audio in mind right so everything you delivered is is custom made for for that media and that was super important for us that what we would produce would fit the audience right that's what we do with wise it's to help people doing their interactive audio um soundtrack so 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 that's why the the, the first people we contacted was you guys <laughs> and 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 we we knew each other a bit as well and we knew that the way the way we like doing business which is to be really transparent in terms of, okay, this is why we're doing that. And this is the benefits that we see there. And this is the benefits that we see for you. If we are partnering there, do you see the same thing? And we were sharing that and quite rapidly, like after the first call, I think it was kind of clear that, all right, I think the stars are mostly aligned. There's a few details we need to iron out and like future meetings. And, and we worked <laughs> a while to figure out everything but the principle i think it was clear that we had a, a real balance and we were bringing both parties were bringing what the other party couldn't bring basically to make something superior um so 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 yeah i'm just glad that uh, you had the time the availability and the willingness to to say yes to that project so so thank you very much again <laughs> and that really is at the yeah, heart yeah. of a strong collaboration right is that that willingness to to work together, to find the right balance. And again, with that transparency, not just of processes, but you know, I think that overflows into strata and what it represents, right? There's just a ton of uh, a ton of visibility into something that may not have had the greatest exposure over time, and your work together, uh, speaks to that transparency. So we're here today at the launch of Strata. This is an exciting time. We're just getting started. But what's next for uh, Boom Library and the production of Strata? So we are trying to cover all sorts of genres and styles we can think of. Um, and we so we have, we're coming out with some footsteps libraries or one footstep library with uh, thousands and thousands of sounds. Of course, we need a movement library for that as well. So we have recorded cloth that's, that's like medieval armory, but also um, modern soldiers, but also rain jackets uh, made of nylon and textiles and all sorts of things. Um, we had a big epic session of World War II firearms that will be out in a couple of months, uh, as well as historic black powder cannons. Uh, and it's really making a big whiz sound if the ball <laughs> flies over your head. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, even an aircraft library is coming up, so you will have like helicopters, uh, prop planes, jet planes, passengers, uh, military, all sorts of airplanes. And of course, something that all game, uh, game sound designers are longing for, as far as I heard, is a physics library with thousands and thousands of sounds hitting on different material, from different material, of different sizes, with, with um, bending, impacting in different like velocity layers and a multitude of variations so a lot is to come over the next years <laughs> and we are very excited to make this happen absolutely excellent well and that physics library speaks right to my heart here uh you know i love those kinds of sounds and i think it's you know many games that need to reach into that deep deep bucket of variation and i know that that's what strata embodies across uh, all of the different collections is really fundamentally that deep uh, ability to not only bend and manipulate what's there but create variations uh, to you know create systems that are believable in a way that uh, that games have always needed so Fantastic. Well, I look forward to that bright future and thanks for joining us today on the live stream at the launch of Strata. Congratulations on arriving here and let's keep working together as we move forward. Absolutely. Yeah. A pleasure and honor. Likewise. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Bye. Bye -bye. Fantastic. Great. Well, Simone, uh, fantastic to have the libraries out 
into the world today. Uh -huh. uh, and I know we're going to dig a little deeper into what that means, uh, but for folks who are fast with their fingers and already hitting audiokinetic.com, let's give them a, an overview of what they can expect there. No, definitely, definitely. Cool. So, all right. So let's look into um, what's there for uh, <clears throat> for you, for people that uh, that will be interesting uh, by Strata. So, um, so first, let's let's look at uh, the production schedule. So, what we agreed. So, the first uh, when we agreed, Boom and us to uh, to create that, we agreed on the production of 37 collection. And those 37 collections being separated in ambience, character sound, comeback, UI sounds, you know, uh, these kind of things. And and that's uh, that's the plan, basically, up to fall 23. Then we already agree with Boom for another round of 20, 20 something libraries, not libraries, but collections to be added to Strata library um, uh, them. And we're also, uh, we want to onboard other partners as well in parallel. Uh, to that, so so the collection will the number of collection will grow quite fast, quite rapidly. Um, but this is what is guaranteed and what we already know precisely: the number of sounds per collection that will be produced. The sound books are all created already, so it's really it's just a matter of finishing them. So um, so that there. So as you can see, for each of these collection, you're seeing the the number of sounds right now on the screen, and uh, and just a reminder again, what is a sound in Strata? Well, a sound, it's, it's a region in Reaper that is comprised of multiple sources that comprise that sound, right? So one sound is actually a lot of content just for a single sound. So, so when we say, okay, there's 500 sound in a collection, well, there's 500 regions with many uh, source, uh, sources inside of it. So, so that's what, what will be produced. And I say fall 23, the, our actual schedule is more summer, but just in case I'm putting some, <laughs> some leeway here um, so, so that we never know what could happen, but this is our plan right now. And if right now you're to go uh, on, on the website and to subscribe, you're gonna get 14 collections. So that's this month. And so you see there's the, uh, aircraft, their ambience collections, creature, explosion, footsteps, UI sounds, vehicles. Um, so that's available uh, now. And every month we're releasing a, a certain amount of collections. So next month we have three additional collections. So Animal Domestic, Animal Wild, and Doors. And then in December, it's going to be Modern Firearms and Bullets. And then January, we go with, it's a special around ambience. So medieval, fantasy, and doom ambience. And it just go like this uh, up to fall uh, next year. So where every month you're gonna have new content. And, and Pierre just mentioned the, the, or Pierre or Excel just mentioned the physics collection. So just look at the number of sounds there. This is gigantic, it's almost. 10, 20 collection in itself. Um, oh, and by the way, when I was talking about um, the early access people uh, that evaluated, so in the academic AAA titles, when the AAA companies that typically they, they, they organize a lot of systems uh, in their games, when they saw the physics collection and the number of sounds there, they said, oh, this might be a solution for the game we're working on right now, where instead of probably spending months, uh, if not more than that, to record their own physics sounds, which will be like the invoice of that will be in the six digit, definitely, right? Having one or a few person for six months a year to produce all that sound. Well, it's gonna be there in not so long <laughs> and you're gonna have a fantastic amount of physics sounds uh, available to you. Um, so that's the plan. That's how we, we want to make sure that we have this uh, steady cadence of new releases uh, coming up. So now, how much does it cost? How does it work? So let's talk about that. So Strata is a per seat three-year subscription model. So that's the model. There's more and more uh, sound effects 
um, vendors that are going the subscription route. And one of the obvious reasons for it is it provides access to every new collections that are added to the library each month. And I don't know for the other companies, but for us, uh, we're starting at 14, we're going to have 37s in a year or less, and, and another set and other partners. So there's a constant stream of new collections added. So the subscription model is definitely uh, the right approach uh, or the best approach, we believe, for, uh, for Strata. So now, how much does it cost? Um, so there's a... There's an actual price and there's an introductory offering. So what we know with the 37 collections that and the number of sounds and everything there, we know that when they will all be available, the value of the subscription will be uh, 1500 per user per year. So, but right now it's gonna be less expensive because we have 14 collections and because it's a new, it's a new model, right? It's a novel way to consume sound effects library as well. So there's some sit, some sort of a early adopters a leap forward that that you need to do there. So we're consequently uh, discounting heavily uh, the collection. So the price will be actually four hundred ninety five dollars per user per year, and that's our early adopter discount. And just to make it clear, so again, so it's let's say five hundred dollar per year. It's a three year subscription, so you're gonna have three installments. You pay five hundred now, five hundred in one year, and in two years the the last five hundred dollar installment. But the beauty of subscribing now is you you guarantee your price for the next three years, and and it's clear, right? The, the where we're heading is toward 1500 in a year from now, maybe maybe before that. So we're starting at 500. So that discount will go smaller and smaller to eventually be at zero percent discount uh, by fall next year. So this price, as let's say 500 dollars, is for this month, maybe the next six weeks, the next eight weeks. We don't know exactly at which cadence we will augment that price, but we know that we will augment that price and we will arrive in a year from now at the, the full value, the full price of it. So if you want to guarantee your low price, better think about it now <laughs> than later. Um, and if it's later, it's fine. There's people here that will appreciate receiving more money <laughs> in the future than the $500 now. In any case, so that's the offering that's how we uh that's how strata is, is is sold as a subscription and and that's your early adopter discount and if you'd like to try it and you want to know more before committing because it's still there's a commitment there we have uh oh no okay i'll talk about the simple library so just before <laughs> just to follow the order of my slides so a little recap what you have you have well it's a library of multi-track sound effects. Everything is multi-track. You also have the rendered files for sure. You have the VST effects from Boom, from Wise, and from IEM. There's ReWise that's been made to really leverage the Strata content and facilitate the export to Wise. And we know that you're going to have in one year from now at least 37 collections, if not more, available to you at a very low price if you adopt, uh, if you adopt soon uh strata now if you if you want there's a sample collection so there's the strata sample one will probably produce others in the in the future and that's your way to basically get a taste for strata uh, before your subscription so what you're gonna get so the sample one contains uh samples of eight of the 14 collections that are available right now um, it's not the full 14 because, for example, we have three UI collections, um, but they're all using the same format or the same, they, they're built the same way. So we just uh, use content of one of the collection to add to the free sample. Same thing between vehicle and aircraft. It's the same principle of having steady RPM engine loops. Uh, so we just provided that. But basically, you're going to have a taste for um, mostly what's available from the 14 collections with that. Uh, sample 
It includes the Strata VST effects, uh, of course, and oh, and super important, and that's something that I really stressed out when we were looking at the licensing uh, and the legal portion. So you can use the content of the Strata Sample 1 for your commercial projects you're working on. So if you're hired by a video game company or you're a content provider and you're providing sounds for a company, you can use the content and the output of your work from Strata and use that commercially uh, in a project. And, and that's all clean because there's no better way to explore a product than doing something for real, right? <laughs> so your, your goal is to deliver the best sound for your project. Well, you can do it with Strata. So it's, it's safe uh, to do it. And finally, oh, and finally, this is just a, uh, it's a bit peculiar there, but so to get access to this, the free collection, you need to subscribe to the free collection. And the only reason for that is we're using in the back end, we're using the same system as the standard subscription uh, for the, the free subscription. So you're subscribing to a zero dollar uh, collection, basically. So, um, and so if you're interested and you want to put your hands on the uh, free sample, it's available now if all the systems are going correctly here, as I suppose. Uh, so just go on the products section of audiokinetic.com. You'll see now there's a new product called Strata. And at the bottom, you can choose between, well, subscribe directly to the product or get the free sample. And when you click there, that leads you to your card. So you see it's a $0 transaction. We're not asking for your credit cards or any other information there. It's just, it's just we go through the card because it's the same process as the standard subscription. Uh, the only thing you need, though, is you need to have an Audio Kinetic account. So if you have already have your Audio Kinetic account, just log in. If you don't, just create one and put a real email address because that's going to be uh, necessary. Um, accept the terms of the, U the EULA for the VSTFX and the subscription and the Strata library. And I suggest that you uh, subscribe to the newsletter as well. So uh, we have a newsletter for WISE, but we're creating a new independent stream for Strata as well. So if you subscribe there, you're going to get a newsletter probably on a monthly basis because we're releasing new collections on a monthly basis. But we know that we're going to have also videos and tips and tricks and like stuff related to strata communicated there and at any given moment you can unregister anyway so uh, but it's probably a good suggestion to do that so now you're you've completed your zero dollar transaction you now have access to the free sample collection so you'll go at two different places to get everything uh, so first to get your plugins you'll go on your profile so you need to to your your audio kinetic uh, user account so click on your profile and you see there's a new tab on the left hand side for subscription you click on that and you see at the bottom you get your installers for mac or windows for the three uh, different plugins so that's how you you get your plugins and for the content for the collection itself this is through the the former wise launcher so we renamed the wise launcher as audio kinetic launcher because now there's more than wise <laughs> to download uh, out of there and because of that, uh, you're forced to update your launcher. So that's the first thing. Just update your launcher. The Strata tab will appear. You click on it, and you'll see your free subscription um, or free sample available there. And you'll see the list of all the other collections available for the full subscription uh, of Strata. And that's it's through the Audio Kinetic launcher that every new collection will be available on a monthly basis. If for a reason we need to update, uh, a collection that already been uh, released. Uh, you'll see the update there. You'll see what to update and so on. So that's really where uh, you get access to all your, your collections, uh, basically. So that's the flow. And with that, um, oh, and maybe last step here, um, and we're heading to the conclusion of this presentation. I suggest that you take, reserve a bit of time just to go through the user guide. Uh, so go on the help, and there's now a strata section for the user guide because, well, it's a novel thing, right? You never consume a sound effects library in multi-track format. So there's a few specificities uh, in the way we build strata that 
really worth knowing. So I suggest that uh, you go through that. You see the, the Reaper preferences that we suggest to install, the Reaper extensions, and um, how we arrange our regions, markers, and so on, and best practices on rendering, UCS naming, that, that kind of thing. And there's also one uh, collection guide or user guide per collection as well. And these are much shorter um, uh, documentation. But the goal is really to highlight what is really specific about uh, this precise collection. Uh, Sometimes it could be, I don't know, cert certain software layer or ways to listen to your content in various ways. Uh, or for some collections, we do use a MIDI controller automation that change the macros of the enrage effects and allows you to get the, the size of an, of an object being from smaller to larger, for example, or whatever type of fancy automation that really change the shape of your sounds uh, or the profile of your sound. So by knowing what is specific on each of those collections, it just expand your, your color, your palette for, uh, for that collection. So it's already, uh, it's, cer it's certainly a good read. Uh, there, so um, so yeah, so uh, really suggest that uh, that you explore Strata, and uh, and I I hope you're gonna have fun uh, putting your hands there and see what you can do with it, and and imagining okay with all the collections, uh, how much flexibility, how much more control uh, that you have with it, and how much more fidelity. I think that you'll be able to achieve because because you really have all the details and all the knobs and and the sources at your disposal and it's really easy to customize that to really fit your needs uh, or, or on the project you're working on. So uh, yeah, this is it. Um, hope you hope you're gonna have a lot of fun looking at it. And I don't know if we receive questions from the Q and A, but uh, we're ready. Great. Simon, thanks so much for helping to usher in an era of multi-track sound libraries and giving folks access to being able to dig deep into, you know, what they're uh, what they're trying to accomplish with sound in, with Strata. Uh, it's super exciting. I'm smiling the whole time. I know this has been an incredible. Uh, investment and an investment in people's workflows and meeting them right where they're at, you know, creating sounds um, and, and yeah, dreaming with uh, audio. So we did have a few great questions come up in the chat. Yeah. And so we'll surface a few of those here uh, uh, along the way. Uh, recapping a bit, you know, it's a design sound effects library that lets you edit the layers, essentially, asked by one of the folks in the chat. Does that sound like a good summary? Uh, yeah, that statement is true for sure. And if we dig a bit more, it's a it's a full-fledged, you know, Reaper project yeah. with all the bells and whistles. So so you really get access to everything. And one of the the point when we started designing that with Boom and and we were uh, basically putting the guidelines on how to create uh, those projects, we wanted to avoid any type of pre-rendering. Yeah. So it's all the raw content, or relatively raw, of course, it comes from recording, so there's certainly some cleanup that, that they do out of the recording, but once the source is clean, uh, it, it's added to the project, and every manipulation is part of the Reaper project. So your volume automation, panning, you know, whatever, name it, uh, all the effect settings, there's nothing pre-rendered. And, and that's the point because sometimes, I remember we presented that to a specific bunch of people and there was a really famous sound designer there, uh, like 40 years of experience. And, and he, of course, that this person knows all the, the library by heart, you know, and and he could say, oh, yeah, this this vendor, it's always a bit too compressed or it's really busy, like it's good, but it's so busy that it would be nice to be able to isolate or remove a bit of the clutter and get to the essence of, of what is, he was looking for. And it's it's hard. It's from hard to impossible to do that when you just have the rendered file, right? Right. 
it's too late, right? It's 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 lost. That that information is lost in the rendered file. Where here, what we wanted is the exact opposite. Let's expose everything and let's them figuring out what sounds best for the context they're working on, and and if they want to add their own effects, fine. <laughs> But right. at least the one we're adding are live and can be bypassed, can be changed, can be adapted. And that was really essential uh, or an essential premise to how to build those projects. Exactly. So you can reach right for that compressor and, and bypass it in order to get that dynamics back that you're looking for from the sound that would just make it land in your project perfectly. Uh, and now you finally have that level of access. That uh, brings up another question that came up in the chat. With the free collection, uh, do you get access to the plugins? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you get the IEM, the WISE plugin, and the Enrage plugin. There's just one difference with Enrage. So it's, it's a read-only version of Enrage that is added there because they, they sell Enrage as a, as a VST effect as well from their store. Uh, there's an iLock key and, and so on. So the programmer that worked, that developed Enrage, created a special version for, for the evaluation package of Strata where it, it uses what we've put in the, in the project, so in, in the final project. But that version of Enrage is a read-only version. So you cannot load presets, you cannot save the presets, you cannot change the settings. But you can change the macros. Yeah. And the macros in Enrage are basically your access point to automate uh, with automation on the tracks, basically. And we're using that in many of the collections to, again, when I was talking about changing shape or the, the profile of certain sounds. So this is still accessible because this is how you craft your sound to arrive to a specific result. So that's there. But if you want to experiment the full Enrage with all the bells and whistles and craziness in there, uh, that will come from the, 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 the subscription, the Strata subscription. Yeah. Well, and I love the the Wise uh, UI update as part of those VST <laughs> plugins. And boy, I sure hope to see that soon in Wise authoring. So stay yeah, tuned. Yeah, it's, it's not part of 22.1, but uh, maybe for a future release of Wise. Yeah. And great to have that first step. Uh, and again, bringing feedback in from people uh, about how they use things, again, driving development across the company, across products. Uh, are there any how-to videos out there? Uh, things that people yeah. can take and maybe get a, a better idea of how to use Strata? Yeah, and uh, so I, we have or if we don't have the five of them, soon we'll have those. Um, this is the thing, we, we work in staging environment and now it's live, but I'm here live with you, so I don't know everything we see. But yeah, we um, there's a Chase Steele, that's a sound designer uh, that, that already, it's an educator and a sound designer and he's produced a series of videos on how to and so on. And we approached Chase with this project saying, hey, we do this thing, but we, think it, it will be quite useful if somebody like you, and he's really good at, at what he's doing, uh, could introduce people to Strata. And so we agreed on uh, creating a bunch of videos. And the first uh, bunch of videos is, the first one is like just the setup and installation of the plugins and setting the right Reaper preferences and things like that and a quick overview. And then there's one on uh, using Strata to produce content for a linear project, so a short movie, yeah. uh, another one for an interactive uh, project. Um, there's one on Rewise that is done or will arrive soon. There will be one on UCS, how to leverage UCS in the future videos. And so, so and this is with, with Chase. Uh, what I'm hoping to see in the future is other people also uh, trying Strata and, and showing stuff, uh, great stuff that can be done with this. So. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm gonna land it there because I think, you know, it's time for folks to get their hands on Strata. Like it's <laughs> time to, uh, to put that in front of people and dig into what's available today 
uh, for people to start exploring. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a ride today on the WISE Worldwide Online Expo. Uh, well, congratulations. Uh, you've made it in, in two hours. Start. <laughs> I, uh, I've never been more on schedule in my life. It's quite, <laughs> quite incredible. Yeah. And to you as well, congratulations on the launch of this exciting new product for Audio Kinetic. Uh, it's a fantastic day for folks out there who are interested in digging in and getting deep on these things. So Yeah, and for people trying it and so on, please get back to us. We were striving for feedback and suggestions and, and maybe praise if, if it's fit, but whatever, right, from good to bad. We want to know how you experience that, where it slows you down maybe in certain areas. We're all about workflow and, and speeding up things, right? And that, that's what we've done with WISE forever. So the same mindset is behind Strata and the future improvement that we want to do with that. So uh, reach back to us, please, uh, with, your, with your feedback. Yeah, we're always listening here. We've talked a lot. Uh over this last year in our live stream series about different ways you can reach out to us. Uh, so please do, as, as Simon suggests. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm going to tie this off with a bow here and uh, say goodbye for now. Uh, All right. Thanks so much for your overview on Strata. And again, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you, Damien, for the great job you've done today again. Thanks. Always, uh, it's always reconforting to know that you're driving the show because you're doing a really good job at it. So <laughs> awesome! Thanks so much. Uh, Take care. Yeah. Thank you. You too. Great. Well, let's just wrap up a couple of things uh, now that we've heard all of this exciting stuff. Uh, you can dig back into previous live streams to hear more about WISE 22.1 features. Again, uh, we did a, a, a live stream at the preview where we went over um, many of the things that arrived in authoring or and will arrive in authoring for the full release of 22.1 this fall. We also had a deep dive during the beta release that included our integrations where we talked through auto-generated sound banks, migrating your projects, and working with Unreal and auto-defined sound banks. So that's one you definitely want to reach back into the archives and take some time with. And just last week, we went deep, deep, deep into CPU performance and wise, something we take very seriously here as we try to meet developers where they're at in order to power their workflows and really achieve uh, performant and stability uh, across their development. So those are three live streams in the can, jump off and dig into those. And then get your calendar set because over uh, the next couple of months, we are gonna go hands-on with Strata, Rewise, the object-based WISE adventure game, the WISE authoring API and WISE authoring query language, our web audio and GME. So. Get tuned in as we continue to unfold what's coming in WISE 22.1 and what can coming to your pipelines when you're using WISE. So we're super excited. And again, just a ton of great developers here at, at Audio Kinetic that we're looking forward to putting in front of the community and sharing those uh, first perspectives with. Uh, the other thing that's getting exciting is we're starting to come back to in-person events. Uh, the Just next week in New York, we'll be collaborating with our friends at Dolby, uh, doing an immersive audio workshop on the ground there uh, with a small group of folks. There's still time to sign up and get registered. And that's going to be a super cool, hands-on workshop where we talk folks through authoring immersive audio using the object-based pipeline and uh, Dolby Atmos for headphones uh, spatialization technologies. 
So definitely line up for that if that's interesting for you and you're in the area. Game SoundCon. Countdown two weeks from that. Uh, coming up in Los Angeles, we have the Wise Room that uh, hosts a series of educational sessions, uh, everything from introductions to music to 3D audio, uh, all the way up to optimizing your project using Unity. And we'll be featuring a couple of sessions that are focused on Strata and hands-on. So if you're going to be at Game Sound Con, uh, definitely find us. Get get fed with this information and education about uh, Wise, about Strata, and we'll see you in the mornings at eight o'clock for coffee in the ballroom for casual conversations. If you're into that, so if you'll be there, I hope to see you soon. And lastly, next year the Game Developers Conference all things moving forward to reconnect with the community there on the ground in San Francisco. Uh, it's been a while for us, and while tying these threads together online has been uh, a great way to meet folks and bring folks to a greater understanding of what we're doing here at Audio Kinetic, the Game Developers Conference is a a place where we can do that in person and looking forward to bringing all of the fresh perspectives to you and the community at that time next spring. So that is wrapping it down. I just wanted to say thanks to all of the audio kinetic developers that were featured here today, uh, the demonstrations that they created and all of the developers who are working alongside of them to create the next version of WISE. Uh, always uh, to serve the community's needs and with our ears wide open to the way that people are working with interactive audio today and want to reach for tomorrow. So that's it. WISE Worldwide Online Expo 2022. We did it. That was fun. Thanks so much for tuning in today, and I'll see you in the future soon. Take care.